Well, in terms of the life cycle <clears throat> and ministry of Jesus, he was uh, uh, prophesied that he would come and he came and we are to celebrate Christmas. He uh, was uh, lived his life up in Nazareth and was uh, learned to be a carpenter and helped his dad out until his dad had passed away and then helped the family until he got to be this age. He came to be baptized. These are the scriptures we've read in the last several weeks was validated, this is my beloved son with whom I am well pleased, and the Holy Spirit drove him into the wilderness of Midley where he was tempted, and then left and went up to Galilee, full of the Spirit, strengthened, called disciples, I think we talked about that last week, a group of people he may get together with him for support and love and prayer, but also to write upon their hearts this gospel message of the love of God, that they too that may carry this message into all the world, down to our present time, then we, disciples of the modern day, are doing the same, learning the words of Jesus, that we may carry that to the world, we written them on our heart. <clears throat> um, and so he went, and where's the place, the first place he would go, of course, was to the church, the synagogue. Now in those days, uh, if you were to worship or to give sacrifice, you would go to Jerusalem, to the temple. There was one temple. But by law, if you had more than ten families living around each other, there must be a church, a synagogue. Now, if I were the minister of that church, my main <laughs> job is to make sure the place always looked nice and neat and clean, that I would get the scriptures out, and that uh, we would uh, teach the children. We would collect food and money supplied, and we haven't gotten far from that either, each day or week. And then distribute that to those in need, those who are poor. And then we would have a service of basically prayers, reading from the Holy Scriptures. And a person would be invited, not the preacher, or they didn't have a preacher, but they'd invite someone to come and to speak, take a passage, and speak upon the truth. And so no wonder Jesus then went to the synagogue and asked to speak. And, and the scriptures that Nancy read said, they were amazed at his authority, the way in which he did it. He spoke from the heart. He didn't necessarily have to say, the Bible said this and the Bible said that and put people down. Somehow he spoke God's love just through the speaking of it. And they were amazed of how he did it. All right, I would like to mainly hone in on the next part. <clears throat> Evil. There was a man there, it said, who had an evil spirit. They believed that evil spirits were everywhere, all over you, around, about you, even in your cradle. You understand the phrase, yeah, everyone needs a guardian angel? That's where it kind of started. You needed a guardian angel to protect you from this evil that would hover around you. Some scientists, I, at least I've read, uh, have discovered skulls in those days uh, that had little holes in them. And they thought if they could drill a hole in your, in your skull to release some of these evil spirits, the way, because people seemed to be possessed. And they didn't know how to do it. And of course they did not understand uh, medicine and modern things and psychology that causes people to, uh, you know, my brother uh, freaks out all the time, we have to calm him down, I keep telling him, we ought to drill a hole in his head. But anyway, uh, we didn't understand psychology and, and, and medicine and that sort of thing. But there was evil afoot, they said, that caused people to do the things they ought not to do. To become different than what God had, had planned for their life. <clears throat> when I was being brought up, um, I thought evil had an ugly face, that evil was missing teeth, that evil smelled bad, had dirty clothes, probably hung out by the play yard in a dirty trench coat. I've since learned over my life that it is part of evil, but the other part of evil that I was not always aware of, evil looked good to sometimes. Evil gives pleasure. It's beautiful at times. Momentarily, maybe, but at times. It can, it can just bring you in. 
for a moment to you think satisfy the need or hurt or pains of your life. <clears throat> and evil then can grasp that. So do I believe that there's evil? Yes. I don't always count evil out there only because the evil I deal with mostly is anyway. But there is evil in our culture. If you want to give it a name of, of Satan, the devil, Baal's Bob, or give it a name, there is evil. It persists us to us all the time. It's in our culture. It gets into our, our system. Sometimes banking systems and law and, and, and government and, 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 of course, in our own life. This is where the seven deadly sins, if you look in Galatians chapter 5 around verse 19, it lists all these kinds of things <clears throat> that can group people. I, I'm not sure if I've been through all seven, but I've been, I've been touched by all of these at some point. Laziness, anger, wanting what's not yours, living in greed, donuts, although you have to go with a definite different translation. I have one at home that I can translate for you. Uh, but we, 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 we give in to these lesser, <clears throat> baser things of life. Particularly when we're weak and not feeling good about self or about what's happening, the flow of our life. 